real quick, answer this for me. Do you think Medicare takes us closer to subluxation-based chiropractic or further away? Dr. John DeVilla here of Custom Chiro Solutions, and today I want to talk to you about where I think that, yes, Medicare rules take us closer to subluxation-based chiropractic. You see, if we think about treating symptoms and the patient comes in with, let's call it a, I don't know, uh, ear infection, are we treating the ear infection? The answer is no, we're not treating the ear infection. What we're doing is we're finding if the patient subluxated somewhere and that subluxation is causing some type of functional loss. Now, what's funny is if you look at the definition of medical necessity as written out by Medicare, it says exactly the same thing. Watch this, you ready? The patient must have a significant health problem in the form of a neuromusculoskeletal condition necessitating treatment. And the manipulative services rendered must have a direct therapeutic relationship to the patient's condition and provide reasonable expectation of recovery or improvement of function. Yeah, function, which is exactly what we should be doing when talking about our patients. Imagine this, the patient comes in, what's wrong Mrs. Johnson? Uh, I have sciatica, okay great. I'm not treating the nerve because we know it's irritated. What I am doing is I'm looking for subluxations in the lumbar spine and the thoracic spine, the cervical spine, in the sacrum. Why am I looking there? Because we know at some point in time there's got to be some nerve pressure. That's where neuromusculoskeletal condition runs in. So we've got that, no problem. It's tied to the patient's condition, which means that maybe an L3, 4, 5 subluxation is causing pain down the leg. Okay, great, no problem. All set. The question is, what's the last part? Yes, the patient has subluxation, but when are they going to pay for it? When are they going to reimburse us or reimburse the patient? And that's the funny part. You see, the Office of Inspector General in 2009, when they did a review of chiropractic documentation, they stated very plainly that they expect patients over 65 to have the condition that they normally have repeatedly, meaning they're going to have exacerbations or recurrences. But what they don't want us to do is they don't want us to manage the fact the patient has arthritis or a disc problem or sciatica. What they want us to do is manage the fact that the patient's condition is causing a functional loss. Now here's the funny part. You know, a lot of people tell me, hey, you know what, John, I don't like this whole idea. I just want to talk about subluxations. I go, great. How are you measuring that they're getting better? Well, I don't want to have to do that. I just want to treat subluxations. Well, I got that. Well, I don't want to do any other stuff. I said, well, let me ask you a question. Do you think measuring function is a philosophical thing? And people go, no, I don't think it is. I think it's an insurance thing. I go, okay, great. Have you ever seen those little charts where you push on a little or a little little light, you push on a button, and then it lights up an organ? They go, yeah, 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 okay, great. Yeah, I know that is. So what's that called? They go, oh, yeah, it's the merit chart. Yeah, yeah, great, the merit chart. Let me ask you this. Where do you think that comes from? Well, they go, ah, I don't know. It just came up. Merit, I guess. I go, no. Well, I mean, what if you were to go look at a book called Causes Localized, one of the green books, and you were to say, yeah, what about it? And I said, well, you realize in that book, BJ goes through all these conditions and says, these are all the functional losses that are tied to subluxations. So believe it or not, functional losses have been tied to what we do back into the 1900s. So if we're looking at subluxation being really something that we're looking for in a patient, what should we be measuring if we're talking about it? Well, it isn't pain. Why isn't it pain? Well, I don't want to talk about pain, A, because it doesn't match probably the way that most of us practice, and then B, we know pain and range of motion losses go away quickly. So if we're talking about what it's going to take to talk to the patient to get them to understand that they need care to be able to get functionally strong, meaning have you adjusted someone and their pain go away in one visit? Well, yeah. Have you adjusted someone and their range of motion return in one visit? Well, yeah. Well, let me ask you this. If that's the case, where are we for medical necessity after day one? Well, there is no more. We're not going to get 360 degrees range of motion in the cervical spine, are we? No. So what takes longer? And what gets the patient better? Is it measuring their endurance? Or is it measuring their range of motion and pain as far as improvement goes? Well, obviously, it's endurance. We've never adjusted someone and their endurance return in one visit. So under the heading of use it or lose it, meaning if they haven't used their muscles in a long time because they've been subluxated and they can't do their activities of daily living, they're gonna be weaker, which means that we need to adjust them to get their subluxations to go away and improve the body's ability to heal slash get them stronger to be able to do their activities of daily living or increase their functional loss. So if that's the case, 
You see how this matches what we do? See, what I want to be able to do over the course of these videos, because this is our first video in a, in a series of 10, what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to explain to everybody how these rules actually help us. And I want us to be empowered by these rules to be able to say, okay, I want to practice the way I want to practice, I get it, but I also want to help the patient get reimbursed as much as possible. Now, if we can help the patient get reimbursed and be able to practice the way we want, that's a win-win for everybody, and that's what we want to do. Thank you so much for watching this video today. We really appreciate the time you've taken to sit down and go over this information. Now, in conjunction with the ICA, which, which we produce these videos for, we're going to be going over tons of information in the future, things such as ABNs, how to respond to a letter from insurance carriers, how to sign your notes, when to sign your notes, things like that. All kinds of really, really important compliance information that we want to bring to you. All of it with a, with a twist that brings it right back to subluxation-based chiropractic. So, once again, this is Dr. John DeVille for Custom Chiro Solutions, and we really do appreciate you watching. We'll talk to you again real soon.
So remember, what we want to be able to do is understand the definition of medical necessity, and we also want to be able to set up the patient's ability to measure their own functional loss. What's the positive on this? The positive is we don't have the patient on day three looking at us going, hey doc, the dreaded words of, am I done yet? Right after you told them they needed 15 or 20 or 30 or 40 visits. Now why do they say it on day three? Because usually after day one, two or three, their pain's mostly gone and basically they're feeling much better, but we all know strength-wise what's gonna happen, it's gonna come back. Why? Because they weren't fixed and they weren't strong enough to do their activities of daily living, and they felt they were, and they went out and they did it, and they re-injured themselves again. So that's what we want to avoid. So here's the thing. When we're talking about the difference between philosophy and medical necessity, or where philosophy and medical necessity collide, really what we're talking about here is, I want you to be able to create for the patient a whole idea of what they need, and then to let them know exactly what doesn't fit down in the model of what insurance will pay for. So practice the way you like and explain to them honestly exactly what insurance doesn't cover, but understand that it's all based on function. If we do that, everyone wins. So what I wanna do is I wanna thank everyone for watching this and remember what we're doing this for is for the ICA to be able to get you guys to get more information and to help you be able to understand more about what's going on. And I'm really, really, really excited about doing this as a member benefit for the ICA. Remember, this is Dr. John DeVille of Custom Chiro Solutions. If you need some more help, give us a call. You can, if you have problems in figuring out exactly what medical necessity is, feel free. Give us a call. Our number is 800-974-3479, extension 2. And right now we're offering a free 30-minute evaluation of how you deal with medical necessity, how you deal with your EMR system. If you'd like a, co a conversation about that, just give us a call and we're glad to help you. Once again, 800-974-3479, extension 2.